everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. I have a fun bonus episode for you today. I had the chance to talk with uh, director Mark Steven Johnson, who is the director of uh, Love Guaranteed, new film from Netflix. It's definitely on brand. It stars Rachel Lee Cook and Damon Wayans Jr. And we only talked for about 13 minutes, but I thought it was really good. And so I'm including, after our interview, I'm including uh, the review of the movie that I did for my podcast over at Rachel's Reviews uh, with my friend Ryan. We have a Hidden Gems podcast where we talk about streaming services and we review their content and try to get get you to watch uh, films that are a little bit deeper than the big name, uh, but we reviewed this film and we do Hidden Gems every Friday and I'll put a link in the uh, description. I'd love for you to check out the Hidden Gems podcast. I think you'll really enjoy it. And uh, so enjoy the review, enjoy the interview and thanks so much. Hi everybody, welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. We're really excited today to be here to talk with director of a new Netflix film that's going to be a big favorite of the Hallmarkies crowd. Uh, it is Love Guaranteed and we are talking with director Mark Steven Johnson. And Mark, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Oh, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me on, Rachel. Yeah, so uh, why don't you uh, introduce yourself a little bit to our audience and uh, tell us how, how did you end up becoming a director? Um, well, I started out um, as a writer, uh, and I'm still a writer. And, uh, I'm from Minnesota, and I wrote a. I moved out to LA to become a filmmaker. And um, the first thing I wrote was Grumpy Old Men, which I don't know if your listeners know or not, but it was mm-hmm. a Jack London Walter Matthau movie. So, um, writing about home and ice fishing and growing up, and actually a romantic comedy between the two of them and, and Margaret. So. Um, I eventually directed a little movie called Simon Birch, and that was my first time directing. And um, I've done a bunch of different stuff, and now I'm coming back to comedy, which I'm so happy about, uh, especially romantic comedy, mm-hmm. which I love. It's my favorite genre. So I got the script for this, and, um, and I just fell in love with it. It made me laugh. And so many of my fr- friends um, are online dating. And so many, you know, even when we were doing our location scout, there were like eight of us in the van. And I said, how many people here have met their partner online dating? And six of them raised their hands. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I thought it was a, a really clever idea and it had a lot of good energy to it. Yeah. So did you go to film school or, or uh, how, how was oh, your... Uh, you know, when I, I went to a small college, so I went on a state uh, back in Minnesota. And then um, I, I kind of drifted around to the year at ASU. And then I did a year at Cal State Long Beach. So nothing fancy, you mm-hmm. know, and really anything you need to learn, you can learn in a book. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> or on YouTube, I find yeah. these days. So I just kind of self-taught. That's great. That's great. So you've done big blockbusters mm-hmm. and these smaller films. And yeah. do you have a preference about what well, you Well, uh, I think, you know, the preferences for me is um, this. <laughs> yeah. Working with Netflix has been, honestly, the best experience. And right now, especially, because this is the week where the movie comes out. Mm-hmm. And usually, you're a nervous wreck, because you're always thinking, is it going to bomb? Is it going to be a hit? Are people going to even know about it? Are they going to go? And this is the first time I've ever done anything. It's like, yeah, people are going to watch it. <laughs> you know right. it's so there's a huge relief there. And also, how they trust the filmmaker to just uh, you know do what you think is right. Do what you think is funny. Do you think what's, what's touching. Um, the bigger those budgets get, the more people get scared, <laughs> mm-hmm. and the more that everybody wants to get involved and put their opinions on it. So it's nice to do something smaller and make it your own and have fun. Yeah. Like I said, just putting something out. We all decided to do this because we just wanted to make something that would make people smile and laugh and have a good time for 90 minutes. You know, that's it. You know, mm-hmm. that's, kind of, that's kind of enough right now, to be honest. Yeah, we all need it. That's yeah, for sure. The lightness out there and give people a break, you know, and that's yeah. Uh, so how did you end up casting Rachel Lee Cook and Damon Waynes Jr. in the lead here in the film? Rachel, it's her idea. So oh, okay. She was involved before I was. So, and we had a big laugh when we met because she said, do you not realize, she said, the first premiere she'd ever gone to was Grumpy Old Men. No and way. She, she's from Minnesota like I am. So we had this connection and all these years later now we're working together. Yeah, so Rachel, she developed it. And uh, it was a fantastic idea, and um, she's a producer on it. Um, and then I came on board, and then we were just trying to cast someone that would be interesting. And 
opposite her that makes me laugh. And I'm a huge fan of Damon's. I love his stand up. Um, I love New Girl, um, Leslie Cox. I just think he's incredibly talented. And when I talked to Damon, he said something really interesting. He said, Look, I'm always the funny guy. If there's any emotion that comes up, I try to kill it with a joke. That's just my nature, you know? And he said, I promised myself if I did this, I was really going to do it. I was really going to be heartfelt, if it, if the scene's heartfelt. And, um, and I really like that. I like hearing mm-hmm. that, you know? So we had a fantastic time. Mm-hmm. Well, they have really, really good chemistry, and it's always nice when you get to see uh, the a little bit of diversity in a couple in yeah. this kind of movie. So I really liked uh, the casting. I thought that was smart. Uh, yeah, we never bring it up. It's the non-issue, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, that's right. Yeah, I thought so too. I, I never even thought about it to be honest. <laughs> Somebody said something recently. Like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the way diversity should be. It should be effortless. It should just yeah. be a natural. Two beautiful people together, but right together and make each other laugh and have chemistry and that's enough. So, Very good. Very cool. Why don't you tell people a little bit about the movie, uh, about what the, the story is and uh, if they're not, uh, if they're not, if they haven't heard about it before. Yeah. Okay. So Love Guaranteed is about a lawyer um, played by Rachel Lee Cook. Um, who t- is running out of money. She's always doing pro bono work. She's always sticking up for the little guy, but it's costing her. She's got bills to pay. She might get kicked out of their office space. And along comes um, Damon Lyons' character, Nick, who um, has been on a dating website called Love Guaranteed, the title of the movie, and he's suing them because their motto is, you'll find love, guaranteed. And he did, so he's going to sue them. Yeah. <laughs> the small print says you have to be on a 1,000 dates in order for the lust to, to, to be in effect, for the guarantee to be in effect. And um, he's on like date 986 when he hires Susan, Rachel Lee Cook. Right. So she takes the case, even though she thinks he's a shyster and that he's totally in this for the quick buck and she has no respect for him. But, it, you know, as they're working together, eventually they kind of start to fall for each other. And the hook is that she go, she had gone on online dating as research, because she'd never done it before, for mm-hmm. the case. And it's with Love Guaranteed, the same site. So... The problem is now if they fall in love, it actually could cost you the case. Right. So it's very, you know, shop around the corner when Harry met Sally. It's that very old fashioned, which I love. Yeah. You know, a romantic comedy. Yeah. I really thought it was funny. I laughed yeah. a lot. And I particularly loved the, the, I think it was her, her work environment. Particularly, yeah. I loved Roberto and I loved uh, Lisa DeRue's character. She was so funny. Yeah, uh, and Roberto, um, Sean Andrew is the actor's name, is so fantastic. And believe it or not, whatever you see there is him toned down. As soon as it's like <laughs> flossing, dancing, he's flirting with everybody. He's, he's the funniest guy, one of the funniest people I've ever worked with. He has his stitches the whole time. And the two of them are like a comedy team. They'd never worked together before or met each other before. Yeah. They were so good together. I they were really fun. good. Yeah, good. And Lisa, we, uh, she's been on our podcast before and she, uh, she is in a lot of Hallmark stuff and she's never really like allowed to be like super funny. Like she's great, but, um, uh, but it was a revelation to me. I was like, she's hilarious. Oh, that's great. I, I, I think. I, yeah. She's as good as anything you'd see on Saturday Night Live or, yeah. or, you know, UCB or anything. She's fantastic. Yeah. Really improv, you know, which is always you know, such a treat. Oh, so there was a bit of improv. You let him oh, kind of. Yeah. Oh yeah, tons. Yeah, yeah that's good. If, one of them, if Sean would throw a line out, she would be right there with something back. Uh huh. You know, you always just hope that the scene will be better than you hoped, and a lot of times it's not as good as you hoped. But with those guys, you're always like, "Wow, this is so much funnier than I thought." Mm-hmm. You know? Even when you think when Sean meets Damon Wyams for the first time when he comes to the office, he looks at me and goes, "Is it my birthday?" <laughs> <laughs> what a weird line. <laughs> it just made us all laugh. Like, all right, that's amazing. Um, yeah, they're a lot of fun to get. Yeah. Uh, so what do you think is the biggest challenge in directing a romantic comedy? Um, the biggest challenge, I think, is doing something that feels familiar because I want familiar. I want something that feels like this is exactly what I want. You know, that feeling you want, but have it not feel repetitive. Mm-hmm. Like, I've seen this a million times. Yeah. And so that- on the balancing act right how do you give people something fresh but also give them something that feels comforting and familiar and good you know there's that there's a formula but it's a formula that works you know Mm -hmm. for a movie like this you know there's nothing wrong with that if you embrace it and they go okay what's going to be our spin on it 
right? So yeah. you see a lot of weirdness in the movie that I like. I hope other people do, like the Internet Master and things like that. Like things that I'm like, that's funny. Like I haven't seen that before, mm -hmm. you know, all these kind of characters. So, um, so that's it. And for this movie specifically, it was just a, it's a little movie and a short, you know, schedule and, you know, you're trying to get a lot in and a very short amount of time. So that's mm -hmm. what we was it, were you planning on working with Netflix from the beginning or was that something that happened later yeah, on? Yeah, it's their original. So okay. yeah, I wanted to meet them, meet them and Rachel at the same time. So again, that's great because you don't have to, you know, your uh, Netflix original is fantastic because it's from the ground up. It's theirs, they love it, they, they've made it, you know, everybody has ownership of it and everyone's mm -hmm. on the same team. Do you, do you think that you could ever see a sequel? For a love guarantee, too. I love it. No, I love nothing more. And I have to start. I mean, for, you know, I never want to be that, you know, precocious to think there'd be one. But if there is, I, I have to think what it would be. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me, too, I want them to live happily ever after. I want to be the I know. The, 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 the love guaranteed. Well, you could make it a spin off. Maybe That's you have the. Uh, the and Denise, you know, yes. <laughs> they get they decide matchmaking is their true calling, and they're new yes. <laughs> I would, I'd watch that in a heartbeat. Yes, you could have them be, yeah, uh, they it could be like uh, legally in love or something like that, and they could be yeah. the, their matchmaker service, it would be great. Right. I, I would, like, Roberto gets dumped by his husband Dante, and he's heartbroken. He, yes. Uh, I'd watch that in a <laughs> Well, that's great. Yeah. And uh, I, I just, I, I thought that it was just really a breath of fresh air, something because that for so long, the only, the only uh, romantic comedies that we got were very like vulgar and were very, uh, you know, kind of the Judd Apatow uh, type of uh, romantic comedies. And so it was really nice to just watch this and just have it be something really fun and energetic without being without being super vulgar okay. which i appreciate uh, that, that's what we wanted we wanted to make something that you could watch with your extended family mm -hmm. you don't gotta sit there with the remote waiting to hit the, you know, the mute button you know? yes <laughs> so i don't think there's any cursing in the movie or sex yeah or anything, but it's not boring and it's not no. you know it's not you know generic it's just mm -hmm. that it, you know well, and I think the hardest thing in romantic comedy is getting that chemistry amongst not even just your leads, but also the, uh, the, the, the whole cast is getting that chemistry, getting yeah. it to feel natural. And, uh, I think that, uh, that, yeah, I felt, I felt it here. I felt like there was a nice chemistry uh, between everybody. So I think yeah, you did, you did a good job. I really enjoyed it. So I'm so glad you liked it. So, well, thank you so much for coming on and talking with us. Right. And uh, I really appreciate it. And uh, uh, we'll be excited to see uh, if everybody gets to see the movie and uh, everybody can uh, let us know what you think if you get to see it. Make sure y'all are, are following on, uh, on Netflix on social media and uh, so you can find out all of the different programs that are uh that are going to be playing on there so yeah, rachel and uh damon both are very active as well yes yeah make sure you're following them and uh thanks again for coming on and talking with us we really appreciate thanks it so lovely to meet you rachel thanks yes. everybody. so much fun so this week we are talking about uh love guaranteed which is a new film coming to netflix new rom-com it basically is a story about a uh, two uh, two professionals. Uh, one is a lawyer played by Rachel Lee Cook, who gets hired by uh, by a man played by Damon Wayans Jr. named Nick, and he hires her because uh, there's a web uh, app, uh, online dating app, that uh, claims that uh, you are guaranteed to find love, and he wants to sue them because he doesn't believe it. And supposedly you have to have gone on a dates from love guaranteed in order to make that the case so they end up uh with this lawsuit and they end up uh kind of falling in love while they're pursuing this lawsuit it's pretty cute 
Uh, at least I certainly thought so. Ryan, what was your overall thoughts about this movie? Uh, very similar to yours. I walked in, or not walked in, but I sat down and I was like, I don't know what to make of this. But by the end, I was like, okay, that was adorable. <laughs> yes, that's right. And, and I mean that in the nicest way possible because overall, I, I did enjoy this movie. I found out that the director, Mark Steven Johnson, actually wrote one of my favorite comedies. It's called Grumpy Old Men with Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau and yeah. Anne Margaret. I learned all my curse words from that movie. I will <laughs> forever hold it in perpetuity, but I digress. Yeah. Uh, I was texting you and I was saying, wow, this guy, Damon Wayans Jr., I wonder if he's related to the actual Damon Wayans and turns out they're father and son. Yeah, that's and right. I, and, and I remember saying to you, I remember watching his father all the time in major pain. <laughs> that's and right, it, yeah. It turns out <laughs> Damon Wayans Jr. has actually been in a few movies that I've seen. He was actually, he was Wasabi in Big Hero 6. And he's oh, one of my yeah. favorite characters in that movie. Yeah. So, so it was like, That's okay, right. this guy's seasoned. The chemistry between, uh, between Damon Jr. and uh, Rachel Lee Cook was the highlight of the movie. And, uh, and if I had to have a knock, I would say that it does follow the formula of, okay, they're going to like, there's a rising action and then they're going to break up three quarters of the way and then they get back together. But without going into spoilers, the way they do get back together was legitimately touching. And um, there's definitely some cliche characters in there. Like the boss of Love Guaranteed is this super hipster, like guru type who's always, yeah. she's essentially Gwyneth Paltrow, but like That's if right. she's running goop. And that's Heather Graham, and she is pretty pretty funny, I think, in the role. And uh, that's one of the things I really enjoyed about the film, because I agree with you. I think the chemistry was really on point. Uh, but I thought the movie was quite funny. And a lot of times people forget that part of romantic comedy, that it'll just be the romantic part and not the comedy part. And they forget to make you laugh. And I thought this was actually pretty funny. I especially enjoyed uh, the, the, the the people at, at her office, uh, <laughs> Roberto and, uh, and Denise. Uh, and it was a kind of a revelation to me to see the woman who plays Denise, Lisa Derue, who I've actually had the I've had the privilege of interviewing her and she's done a lot of Hallmark stuff, a lot, a lot. And, but I've never seen her be this funny. And I thought that her and Robert, Roberto were really funny. Yeah. And, Roberto is one of the sleeper hits of the whole movie. I yeah. was watching it. I'm like, I want to get a coffee with this guy. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. should redo my wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they were really good. You just get a real sense of of uh, kind of joy just within the picture, I think. And and I I think they had really nice chemistry. And I think that uh, they give some reason for why he's doing this. It's not just to to be this petty lawsuit. Like there's there's some they they kind of flesh it out and make it a little bit more believable. But um but yeah, I really enjoyed it. So I'm glad you did as well. I'd probably give it like a 6.5 out of 10 i think it basically succeeds in doing what it's trying to do and that's what you want in a movie that's all you can ask for i think i'll be a little generous and give it a full 7 out of 10 Very just good. because i loved the side characters and they yeah. just they kept me engaged through the Very whole good. thing all right and uh ryan where can people find you uh, they can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd at RyanCam20. And then, of course, there's my YouTube channel. And I just crossed 110 subscribers today. I feel so rich. <laughs> nice. That I'm, just, I'm just so happy. Like the past five months or so, I just was laser focused on the channel. And it just, it just it's growing like a weed. <laughs> and, I'm so uh, glad. And in terms of content, uh, I wrapped up Nolan Month. I'm going to be reviewing Tenet and... That's going to be a lot of fun to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm going to be jumping straight back into the AFI project because I've got like 30 or so movies left to review. And, and I want to try and get it done by the end of the year. So expect videos for the best years of our lives. Treasure of the Sierra Madre, Dr. Strangelove, Midnight Cowboy, The Sound of Music, King Kong, and just Ooh. the list goes on and on and on from there. So if you want to go ahead and subscribe, it's like this is the best time. 
Yeah, it sounds like some really good stuff coming up. You guys should definitely subscribe. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check all of that out. And also you can find me at the Hallmarkies podcast. Have a really big week this week. So thanks so much. And we'll talk to y'all later. Bye, everyone.